Good afternoon, everyone. So, I guess wrong timing just after lunch. I hope people aren't sleeping now, dozing off, right? Just about to, okay? Okay, we'll start soon then. Thanks, Deepa. <laughs> Um, so, I think it's a very interesting uh, topic that we are going to start today with and uh, we, it's a very sensitive and very interesting conversation that we've been having, you know, just while having lunch and I think we went on and on and on and there was no end to it. But I guess uh, with the time restriction, I'm going to stick to a few questions and few points that all of us would want to talk about and we leave some five, last five, seven minutes for audience questions since it's a very relevant topic. And uh, thank you, panelists. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you, Mahima. Thank you, Geetika and Amita for joining us here today. And I don't think so anyone of these uh, esteemed panelists needs any more introduction here. So let's get uh, started with the topic. Uh, I think I'm going to start with, uh, I'll just randomly start maybe, start with uh, Geetika. And uh, Geetika, um, now with mental health, the conversation that we are doing, which is more about, you know, mental health in corporate world. And especially after COVID, I think things have changed so much. There have been many conversations, many articles, many things that we have been podcasts that we are talking about, uh, hearing about. So why do you think mental health is becoming a priority for organizations these days? Okay. So uh, very good afternoon, everyone. And I hope you had a very, very hearty lunch. Um, thanks, Shivani, for, uh, and I think this has one uh, of the most pertinent topics that we have been discussing, whether it is at the home front, whether it, as, uh, it is there at our professional front, whether we are in office, whether we are at home. Uh, ironically, yes, COVID uh, has been one era in the human, in the human race that has actually turned 360 degree everything for us. Uh, very recently, I was just going through some reports and Deloitte has come up with a report very recently where it clearly stated that about 80% of the Indian workforce, they are facing mental health issues. And this report is very recent. There was another report which uh, Medibuddy, it was there out and they did in some collaboration with CII which very clearly mentioned that about 62% of, uh, uh, of Indian workforce which works in corporates, as compared to 20% of the global workforce, they face burnout issues at the work front, at their workplaces. Indeed, they are very alarming figures. And coming to the point that how, yes, organizations have started realizing it, because the first thing they have realized is that more mental health issues which their own employees face, it definitely hits hard on the business results. It hits hard on the productivity of the employees. And definitely then it gets a down rain on somewhere down on the culture and the overall aspects of meet any organization. That is the reason I think that most of the organizations have now started imbibing the importance of mental health, whether it is a part of daily routine, whether it is a part of redefining their culture statements, whether it is a part of any kind of uh, catch-ups or meetings with line managers, with business heads that's happening. So, yes, along with that, I think the... Uh, this era has been there in terms of there's a lot of awareness. Overexposure, I would like to use the term overexposure, of course, exposure is there. Overexposure has also termed that there's a lot of, lot of awareness. People are talking about it and they are demanding when you are in an organization that yes, mental health is extremely important for me. And that's where I feel that organizations have taken that route, that come what may, it has to be a part of the regular culture. Well, absolutely, and I think uh, there is everyone who plays an equally important role, and when it comes to the leadership, so Ajay, my question to you, how do you see that leadership play, needs to play an important role here, a critical role, when it comes to having those 
uh, initiatives or the policies and the organization. I'm not, uh, you know, it's more about that. It's not just uh, for the namesake, you know, the policies and the culture is built in. So how do you see leaders playing that role and the organization playing that role here? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, like, I work with Fortis Healthcare, and Fortis has one of the most comprehensive mental health program in India. And I think that's the need of the hour, as you all know, that government also has put it in the agenda for the mental health. Like, the Olympics team also took a mental health expert with them this time, when they went for the Olympics, so that they can counsel the place over there. So it's very extremely critical and important. It's not from the organization, from the perspective of the nation itself. And like what she has told about 80% of the people are suffering. So a lot of awareness is required. A lot of awareness is required for people to understand. So that leadership can play a very important role from the corporate perspective, from the culture perspective. Like they have to imbibe it in the culture. Like people have to not to be scared. Like people are very scared. One of the four people don't come forward and share their mental health issues with anyone. Because we have got mental counselors and all that. We have a dedicated mental helpline. So Fort is doing a lot on it. But... I think a lot of people don't come forward and talk about it. So it's important to people to develop that. Gen Z is pretty okay now that they have started coming forward. But people have to understand, the organization have to understand, like what uh, Gitika also said, that it improves the productivity of the organization also if you have a good mental health of the people. So they have to come forward, uh, the leadership has to set an example, like please come forward, it's not a stigma, it will be confidential, and we are there to help you. Yeah, I think uh, that, of course, that's where the leader's uh, role comes in. And uh, Namita, my question to you, how do you see, like, you know, when Ajay is talking about leaders need to be open about it, you know, you need to be transparent about it. So when you have to align, um, you know, when there are Gen Zs and millennials and the older generation working together in an organization, how do you see it? It's definitely an effort, right? How do you align everybody? And what role do leaders and what role do the younger generation needs to play here yeah. to come align on the purpose and build a culture which is positive culture, which is more, you know, driven, purpose-driven culture? Uh, that's a great question, I think. Uh, and, you know, I would like to give an example here. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you, uh, us in this group actually have worked with a Gen Z and a person who is about 50 years of age. I'm not sure, many. Oh, we have two people. Okay, so um, I think uh, with technology advancing so much, uh, both the millennials and the uh, Gen Z along with the leadership teams have to have a synergy of working together. We cannot just have just the Gen Z leading the way. We need more of reverse mentoring. We need more of cross-functional trainings happening. We need the leadership, with the strategic thinking that the leaders have imbibed over the years to be translated into different strategies to the Gen Z. And of course, the digital, the new technology that's been there available, which is like, you know, something that people, you know, the Gen Z can actually activate immediately, can be, you know, transformed and uh, transferred to the, uh, the, to the senior team members. So in my view, I think more of reverse mentoring, more of cross-functional trainings, more of, uh, you know, uh, leader leadership, uh, uh, like having more training programs where people come together and collaborate and not taking this offense that, oh, this is a bacha in the group, cannot execute this. Oh, this is an uncle in the group who cannot execute this. These are the conversations which need to stop. I think in my view, uh, the only way to build that synergy in an organization is when we look up to that force for some kind of mentorship and that force also looks up to us for some kind of development as well. So that's my take on this piece. Yeah, and I think to add to that, I feel it's also important for the leaders to be, you know, yeah. uh, open about it, yeah. transparent about their yeah. mental health and mental well-being, Absolutely. you know, unless and until you are you are sounding vulnerable and you yeah. let them know that, okay, fine, yeah. we are also there, you know, as humans, people don't open up. Right. So, so that I, is again, If I could yeah. just add an example here, Shivani. Uh, I mean, how many of you actually have lunch alone? How does it feel to have lunch alone with no one to absolutely talk about? And even if you see there is a person in the group having lunch alone, how many of us actually walk up to that person and do a conversation? That's where your mental health hits hard. I have seen people where 
people don't look up to them, don't walk up to them simply for the reason, oh, it, uh, he or she is an XYZ. It's not my department. It's not, oh, I am so and so. No. Those conversations have to stop. It's high time. Mental health has to be normalized. Yeah, so it's not uh, the role that one person is playing here, yes, right? The absolutely. organization, yeah. So we're talking about each and every individual contributing sure. to building that absolutely. culture of, you know, mental yes. well-being of every yeah. colleague, every senior, junior right. person. Absolutely. And I think there are a lot of um, organization policies and a lot of uh, things for different uh, sections of absolutely. the organization. Now, yeah. for example, I think uh, Mahima was talking to me about... Um, you know, how mental health of uh, new mothers, we, when we talk about, you know, after when, when, when they come, once they come back from the maternity leave. In fact, even before that, I think when there is a news about, you know, they are going to be like mothers and of course, uh, when they're carrying a baby. So there are phases that they go through while they are working with an organization. And when they go for the maternity leave, they come back, then there is some support system. So how do you see that happening, Mahima? So I think I'm going to start with the preconception phase. If we look at the uh, age of women, you know, when they want to plan for a pregnancy, we see that it's advancing. And we see that women till the, probably uh, in their 30s also, they're not able to decide to go for a pregnancy because they have their career goals and, you know, they're scared that, okay, they might kind of probably lose the opportunity for their career promotions if they plan a pregnancy. So I think uh, the fertility also gets affected because, you know, women have this, uh, you know, nature, the, the, the call is there that you have to plan the pregnancy on time. Uh, stress definitely leads to a lot of impact on the fertility and pregnancy, we all are aware. And even when they conceive, nowadays we see a lot of women having difficult pregnancies or precious pregnancies and a lot of them sometimes require bed rest. Right, so not a lot of uh, organizations allow work from home culture for such women. So I feel that even if we talk about the maternity policies in organizations, definitely needs to be rechecked because I don't think there are policies for precious pregnancies in organizations. And uh, uh, if the mental health is not being taken care of at workplace, can also definitely lead to impact on the baby's growth and development and can also increase the chances of having premature deliveries. So overall for maternal child health in India, I feel that organizations definitely need to pay more attention to their policies related to maternity leaves or related to childcare leaves, which makes it easier for women to plan the pregnancy at an earlier age and also for fathers because they need to be there to, say to that. support. Exactly. So, so yeah. things like paternity leave, you know, some, some companies do offer two weeks paternity leave, but some of them don't. And I feel two weeks is too less because a woman takes a lot of time to overcome the transition journey from pregnancy to postpartum phase. So I think that somewhere organizations also need, also need to enhance the policies for fathers. And uh, in fact, even if we see working moms, a lot of single moms are also there. So how are organizations helping them in terms of their mental health to raise the child and at the same time, you know, job is important for them being single mothers. So I feel still there's a lot to do in this area. So, um, you know, when you're talking about uh, the policies here, because uh, we have our office here in India, we have our office in Singapore, Malaysia, and of course, US globally. So when we started working on the policies, and we saw there are so many interesting benefits that, you know, Singapore, Malaysia has for, you know, whether it's mental health and uh, paternal leave, maternal leave. So we definitely insisted. I said that definitely, why not? In, why should it, India not have, you know? Why haven't we heard of such policies? So I think that is something uh, we need to learn from around, you know, like in terms of whether it's um, another country, another nation, another policy that you feel is fit for the organization, fit for the employees, fit for the mental well-being of everyone. And I think, well, like you said, you know, if people are happy, employees are happy, that's how the productivity increases and that's how it's a very cohesive work environment. So, uh, another factor, of course, I've seen here is that uh, in Asia... In which, fact, Shivani, yeah. I would like to add uh, one very interesting point here when you mentioned about uh, Singapore and Malaysia. So, there's this... Uh, of course, I won't name the brand here. So, there's this brand in Australia, and they have strict rules between 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. The organization, within the organization, no colleague, no peer is allowed to call, text, or even send a team's message to any of the colleagues. 
So because it is written down in their policy, it is a mental health awareness time for you. So, uh, you know, the employees, they step out, they go for grocery shopping, they go and take care of the kids, they take a break. So it is considered very rude that if you call up, even if it's an emergency, you're not supposed to call. So that's how the other countries, they are bringing this up. But yes, to your point that how can we do that in India, yeah. that we have a long way to go. And I think somewhere there has to be a balance, right? When we are talking about building those uh, policies, it's also important as leaders for us to, you know, bring that uh, culture of that fine, let's not overuse the term mental health, which is like, you know, fine, if there are, lo there are low days for everyone, there are bad days for So people, like yeah. I was just mentioning backstage also that people don't understand the difference between sadness and depression. Yeah. Even when they are sad, they think that they are depressed and then they kind of feel that the mental health is getting affected. So maybe there is over-awareness also amongst the Gen Zs and there is misuse of the word depression also happening too easily by them. So I think that, uh, uh, that it's important for them to understand the difference between feeling low and sad and depression because it's okay to feel sad in fact we have to have that emotion in ourselves for us to have a good EQ as well but uh, definitely people uh, you know need to know the difference between the two yeah absolutely uh, so Ajay when um, you know we were just talking backstage in terms of how Dr. Samir Parikh is like the good person and you've been talking about him how do you see, like, you know, when we just uh, spoke about leaders being open about, transparent about, uh, you know, like uh, their mental well-being and uh, mental health, how do you see there are, the younger generation needs to break that stigma of when they are not talking about it, they are not open about it at times, and that's how, you know, unless and until you have that conversation. So how do you see the organizations or the leadership plays a role here? to let people talk and be more transparent and be more vocal about what they are going through. So that there is an environment which is more cohesive environment, which is more aligned environment. Yeah, for, that's what I said, we, we have at Fort is a very, very comprehensive mental health program and led by Dr. Samit Parikh. So we have a dedicated helpline number for the employees, which is 24 into seven. If any employee wants to connect on that helpline, maybe any kind of advice is required, employees and for their family also. So that is 24 into 7. So that builds in a culture for the young generation. Also, awareness is fantastic. It's growing day by day. So a lot of programs are happening, like we just uh, launched uh, Adayu uh, Mindfulness. It's, a, it's an AI-based app. Because what is happening, like a requirement is huge, and you don't have the professionals to cater to it. That's another challenge if you have people are getting more and more aware, but you don't have the professionals to answer it. So how do you look into that? So that's going to be another challenge. We're talking about making people aware, doing a lot of programs are happening, a lot of dialogues are happening, a lot of podcasts, a lot of uh, initiatives are being taken for awareness. But if we don't have the professionals to answer it, or maybe to come to take care of the total population, like 70, 80% of the corporates are affected, how do you cater to them? So that's why not many of the people are coming forward for that also. But we are taking help of AI. So from that platform, people are using, even the Zenzi is pretty good with uh, using AI and tech. So they approach the help and is able to help them quite a bit. I think more than 25 lakh conversations have happened on that app as of now. So that has been one of them. So that's, uh, that's an app which has been launched. Then we have this podcast which are happening. We have tied up with YouTube. Dr. Samir Parikh is taking 36 podcast over there so that Zen is also aware about it from the leadership perspective. So leaders are participating in these programs. So th they're uh, sharing their vision on the mental health. And so I think that everything is required to um, make it people understand it better. And I think it's going to help that way. Yeah. I think that that's a very interesting thing. And that's a lot of organizations need to learn from that. Um, so Namita, tell me, like, when you talk about uh, you know, like Gen Z, millennials, and of course the technology, all of us are on the phones most of the time and, you know, like listening to the conversations and maybe on Instagram, social media. It's too much of information to grasp, right? Too much, I, th I think, even I feel, you know, at times my mind gets cluttered if I'm like all the time on LinkedIn, oh, that's a pressure, like, like you know, have to uh, repost something, I have to comment somewhere and then there is... So is that like one of the reasons which is like the, you know, 
making us more anti-social and not conversing openly and being, you know, like, uh, relate, being able to relate to the human emotions so much? Uh, if you asked me personally, I believe in this phenomena called practice the pause. You need to pause, you need to think before what you're doing. Too much of, so with Instagram, it's too much of content. We used to say the same thing for Twitter and now that we say the same thing for LinkedIn. It's too much. So we have to prioritize what is that we want to do. Now, when it comes to connecting it to mental health, uh, at the same time, there is a conversation happening on Instagram and at the same time, there's something happening at your workplace. How do you prioritize it? Would you say that something on Instagram is more important than something happening at your office? No. I think that particular event, initiative, effort is also in your interest. So I think practicing the pause, understanding what the situation demands at that particular moment is something that Gen Zs need to practice. And like your previous question that came to me, Again, we need to utilize that opportunity for engaging with the rest of the leadership around. It has to be balanced with what you're doing. That's your job, that you're doing something, but do not let that affect your mental health, that that becomes a priority for you. And the other one takes a low line. So I think that's a very interesting point when she's saying practice that pause from audience. Can anyone tell me how would you want to practice that pause? Because it's more like self-trained. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah. I think that Put is it on what the airplane like. mode, as simple as that. Go blind to what is happening outside of that particular event. I mean, I see people when somebody is speaking, I see people fiddling on phones. People looking, yeah. scrolling Instagram on mute. I mean, how does that help you? I also want to give a very, not connected to the question, but I also want to ask this question to everyone. Very simple thing. We all go through performance reviews. We all go through appraisals. How many of us actually stand up and ask this question, Tujhe kitna mila? Usko kitna mila? Uska promotion hua? I don't think it's worth our mental health. I'll be very honest. I tell you from my experience, when I have this conversation with my husband also, I tell him, no, it's not worth my mental health. I think I got what I deserve. That's where you have to pause. You have to put a line. That's where you have to think through what is right for you and what is that you need to know. The Gen Zs these days uh, feel that, no, that's not the way. Switch the job, leave, move on. No, that doesn't give you any kind of stability. I think that's where I've been through an era where we used to say this a few years back. No, if you want to grow in PR, just switch your job. No, that's not the case. You have to be stable. I'm sorry I'm deviating from the topic, but I think these all link up to your mental health, which we need to go back and reflect that this is a point that needs to be called out. We all need to discuss uh, you know, we need to reflect within ourselves that whether is it really worth talking it, talking about it. And our Gen Zs, most of them do not understand this. I want to give an example here of Dr. Samir Parikh, who is the chairman of our mental health. So he says, I do digital detox every day. At 10 o'clock or 9.30 or 10, he switches off his phone and he leaves it and he wakes up in the morning at 6, 6.30 and then he, after that at 7 o'clock he's going to look at the phone. He said, Ajay, if I don't look at a phone for 15, 16 hours, I mean, 8, 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours, it doesn't make any difference to my life or not to the other people who are there. So far, we have the dedicated helpline number, whatever they can connect there. But I think digital detox, what we're talking about, that's important because so many platforms are there and too many diversions are there. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you talk about our parents, they never had phones, they never had all electronics around them. So that's the time when people had those dinner table conversations, yeah. When, when there were dinner table conversations now. Exactly, right. So I think that's, that's very important. And I think it starts when you talk about mental health and well-being and uh, the organizations of the corporate world, it starts from home as well. I think it's up to us. It's the, our ownership, how we build our families, our relationships, our colleagues, our friends, how, how we build those relationships. So yeah, I think I'll uh, now a few minutes left. So any questions uh, from the audience?
go outside. I suggest the, uh, the authority, they should uh, take up this matter with the government. Under the old regime, tax regime, IT regime, ATC was there, take LTA and enjoy. But in the new tax regime, it is not there. It is very important. Subject is very important. But what is the solution? We are making money. We are not making money to give to the doctor. That's very important. The, uh, there is one more, if you are practically, if you see at the office, it's a very habit now, immediate response as soon as you receive the email or WhatsApp. It is not affecting the mental health? Yes. They are used to, oh, I got an email, I have to answer it immediately without wasting any time. Don't you think the work from home is creating a big issue on the mental health? It's a very, very problem. When you go to the office, you meet people. You have the tea break. You have the lunch break. You sit with the team. You enjoy. When you go to the office, you change your dress every day. That clears the mental health. So I think, no. uh, yeah, so we, that's exactly what we discussed. And uh, the, it is, yeah, Deepa, please. We'll just Actually, come back to so. And one more last point. The uh, Madam rightly, rightly said the collaboration and partnership is very, very, very important. Mean, uh, connect with the people. Yeah, absolutely. And your mental health. <clears throat> Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Deepa. Yeah. So um, I actually, it's not a question. It's more of an observation. Um, so there are some companies, like you said, uh, in Australia there is one company where they do not allow you to do that. Uh, I have had the opportunity and the privilege of working with two such companies where the global CEO actually in a meeting with us told us that, look, if I send, even if I send you a meeting request and if you feel you're not going to be able to join that meeting for something, decline it, carte blanche. And we all did it, right? Then um, another organization, where I used to be a mental health champion, we were all trained to do that during COVID specifically. Uh, it was not so much about the digital detox, it was also about the ability to be able to decompress yourself. You know, sometimes you have to be with your phones, etc., but you still need to decompress yeah. and be coming in on to the right kind of uh, phase. So I was just wondering, company culture, how much of that is important for the mental health of the organization and the employees? Because Again, I have worked, as I said, in multiple organizations, and in two, I have found that the company culture was very specifically directed. Like, Friday, 6 o'clock onwards, nobody will bother you. Unless there is a crisis, in which case you'll get a call. You don't have to answer emails, you don't have to work on weekends, and there are companies who will insist that you work not only on weekend, but Diwali, Puja, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the company culture? I mean, how does one work on company culture at a, at a much more, uh, I would say, holistic level to be able to get better mental health for the employees? So who would want to take that? Like? Um, I, I'll partially okay. address the two questions. Uh, so, so you picked up the topic about uh, mothers giving phone to children. So I come from a uh, sector where, you know, uh, our doctors increasingly talk about screen time and children. Now, if my mother's own mental health is not stable, how does a mother's mental health, like she rightly pointed out in the beginning of the discussion, that, you know, a mother's mental health is, in, you know, influenced by multiple factors. It's not just that what she's facing at workplace. It's not just what she's, she has a newborn baby or a toddler or an infant to take care of. And she's going through a lot. There is a lot that's happening in her space. Uh, it's not like I would say that the child should be completely off the screen. You can give five minutes, 10 minutes, but in the interest of your own mental health, mothers should not spend excessive time on digital media just you know, uh, to detoxify and say, okay, my child is little you know, away for 10 minutes, let me just do some digital detox. No, that's not the solution. That's where your mental health again goes wrong. I, and I, I, I mean, I, I personally feel, I mean, I also have a toddler. I, I you know, after nine o'clock, I practically keep my phone away because I reach late. So that's the time when I feel that it's my priority to give time to, you know, uh, to my uh, kid because that's what something we've, you know, brought this into this world to grow for. 
So yes, mental health has to be demarcated at your own end. Uh, Ma'am, coming to your question on uh, culture, I think uh, culture strongly flows in from leadership. If, uh, like you rightly mentioned that you worked in organizations where you're where your, your own leader actually said that, okay, if you're not available, don't do it. I think it's, it is a strong influence that flows in from the leadership team. It's the way they are able to, uh, you know, uh, kind of guide the team, what is high priority, what needs a low priority. Of course, there's a crisis, the teams go, in, go on and on. But the culture is largely been influenced when we, you know, uh, have the leadership teams practicing values themselves, being transparent. And also, they should not set as an example that, you know, they are not taking enough breaks and they're not letting the team also take enough break. Both has to be balanced equally. They need to, the encouragement flows from that culture, from the leadership that, you know, this is what you should do and this is what you should not do. We all have, uh, you know, so many leaves and, uh, you know, we, we have the year end coming in. A lot of people would actually start planning their leaves. We had the festivals around the corner. People should be encouraged to take leaves and we should respect their privacy. I think that all flows from the leadership. That's how the culture is shaped in an organization. Absolutely. And I think I'll just add to that. I think regular check-ins are very important. As with you know, large organizations, many members of the organizations, I think it's important, like she said, it flows from the leadership. So from the topmost to down bottom, I think it's the regular check-ins are very important, how everyone is operating in what system. So I think to sum it up, uh, let's, um, I would say it was a great conversation. Um, and of course, like we know that mental health and mental well-being is not just a personal responsibility. I think it's a shared mandate between the employees and the employers and the surroundings. Thank you so much.